Hello, I have a couple of things that I want to share with you that the Lord's laid on my heart today for the body of Christ in particular, to be able to do what we're called to do and be who we're called to be during this time. And uh, I also have at the end just a couple of things that I want to share specifically to pastors and ministers, okay? Uh, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17, Paul's praying. It says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, or literally his knowledge. Verse 18 says, so that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, his calling, and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. The saints are the inheritance of God. Now, the Amplified Bible in verse 18 says, by having the eyes of your heart, the Greek word cardia, heart, having the eyes of your heart flooded with light, so that you can know and understand the hope to which he has called you. Now, he's called you to a hope. He's called me to a hope. As believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, we are called to a hope. There's, there's one calling in the New Testament. The word calling is always singular. There's just but one calling. There's one body of Christ. There's, there's one head. Amen? Jesus is the pastor, the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the teacher. He is the head of the church. And so as believers, what does that mean to us? If, it, if you come on down to chapter 4, verse 1, it says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you're called. There's a vocation or there's a divine calling. In, in the Amplified, it says, I appeal to and beg you to walk, to lead a life worthy of the divine calling to which you've been called. It's still talking about the same thing. Paul, the Apostle Paul is still talking about the same thing he was talking about in the, in the first chapter when he's talking about the calling. With all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, listen to this now, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There's a unity in the body of Christ that is missing right now. There's a unity that is not there. It's very lacking. And it's because so many people have their own agendas and everybody is calling out what they perceive to be something that somebody else is doing wrong or something that they feel like they, they're the police. They're the Christian police trying to make sure everybody else stays in line with the way they're doing it. Now, the next chapter this is all the same book. It's the same letter that he's writing to the church at Ephesus. In the next chapter 5, starting in verse 8, actually, verse 6 says, Let no man deceive you with vain words. The Amplified Bible says, uh, Empty excuses and groundless arguments. Groundless arguments. Verse 8 says, For you were sometimes darkness. He said, he said, don't be partakers with them in verse 7. Don't get into their silly arguments. Don't, don't try to take yourself down to their level. In, 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 in trying to argue over petty things. He said, verse 8, For you were sometimes darkness, but now are you light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. In other words, the fruit of the Spirit doesn't come out with you getting into some baseless argument, trying to prove that somebody else is wrong or some other church is wrong or they're doing it this way and, and that this other pastor over here has called, uh, you know, called his people to do a certain thing or he feels like the Lord's called him to do something. Let's keep going. The fruit of the Spirit is portrayed in goodness and in righteousness and in truth. Proving, verse 10 says, Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. Light does that when you walk as children of light. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Now that doesn't mean that you go around again pointing fingers. No, here's how you reprove them. Watch this. For it's a shame to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. In other words, verse 11 says, um, in, in the Amplified Bible says, Take no part in and have no fellowship with the fruitless deeds and enterprises of darkness. But instead, watch this, let your lives be in so contrast as to expose and reprove and convict them. Now, here's what I have on my heart that the Lord, I believe, wants to share with us today. We are not called, you are not called, I am not called 
to point out darkness. We are living in a world right now that is walking in darkness. Second Corinthians chapter four, verse four says that the uh, God of this world, Satan, wants to keep people's minds blinded. He wants more than anything else for people to walk in darkness so that the glorious light of the gospel of Christ Jesus won't be seen. In other words, there is a light that, that the, the gospel of Christ, there's a, there's a glory about the gospel of Christ that'll shed light on people's lives and, and, and make such a difference in their lives. And the God of this world wants people's minds to be darkened to that. And so it's our job as believers to share the gospel, to live a life that is full of light. We have believers that are trying to point out other people's darkness and they're walking in darkness. Darkness, uh, uh, Martin Luther King Jr., said that darkness can't drive out darkness. Only light can do that. In other words, light is the only thing that we have to expel the darkness. And as believers, as children of God, we are called to walk in light, to allow light to do its job. Glory to God. Now here's, in closing, here's what I want to say to you pastors, to you ministers. There are a lot of things going on right now. There are some people that are meeting. There are some people that are not meeting. Our church has not met for the last two weeks. I've shared online. Um, it is, it's what I believe the Lord has called us to do. Uh, anybody that's ever heard me preach more than a half of a sermon understands that I'm not scared of this peasant virus. I'm not scared of the virus. And I believe firmly that, that our church would be protected. Our church would be spared. People come in faith to worship God in our, in our church. I believe that that virus wouldn't spread. Now, here's the thing. I'm not called to impose my belief system on anybody. I'm called to be a light. And so you will never, over the last couple of weeks, you've never heard me say one thing against any other pastors or any other churches that have chosen to meet. And, and here's the thing. Those are our brothers and sisters in the Lord. No matter what we do, we're on the same team. We are on the same, um, the same side. We are on light's side. And so I just encourage you, do pastors, do what you're called to do. If you're called to meet uh, via video, if you're called to uh, do some kind of a, um, a, a video from your house, or if you want to get your worship team together, obey the laws of the land, obey the laws of the state of Ohio. If the governor comes out and says that we are not to meet, then don't meet. Okay. Obey what, what those in authority have spoken over us and, and the guidelines, because there is a greater good. This is not like I've seen people, um, you know, liken this to, to things in the sixties with segregation and things like that. But this is, this is so different from that. This is for the public safety's welfare. This is for the, the good of everybody. And I, the decision that we made, uh, was not to appease anybody, but I want the light that our church is sharing. I don't want it to be evil spoken of. I want people to see that, that we are not trying to prove anything, that we're not trying to show that we're more full of faith than anybody else. So, so we made the decision to allow people to worship in their homes and glory to God. There's nothing wrong with that. I believe if the apostle Paul were alive today and he had the opportunity to look into a little box a little rectangle and share this word of God with people all around the world or all of all the people that he had relationship with and could speak into their lives. I think he'd be doing the same thing. Glory be to God. So here's the thing. It all boils down to this. Chapter four, verse three of Ephesians says, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. So allow the unity of the spirit to work. Keep peace with your brothers and sisters. Live the life that you're called to live. And I just pray that this is encouraging to somebody here. Don't get caught up and tied up in all of the things that are going around and, and who's right and who's wrong. Listen, love people. Be a light. Allow your light to shine in the dark places. That's what we've been called to do. I love you. Thank you so much more than anything else. I, I so much want the word of God to be shared. Uh, at our church, Faith Building Church, we have uh, taken the mandate in Mark chapter 4, literally, the sower sows the word. So we want to sow the word into your life. Uh, you know, if you if you have enjoyed this or any of our other videos, I've been sharing a lot of videos lately. I'm going to put a link uh, above the video uh, to our YouTube page. And if you will share this word with somebody that it will minister to, uh, go to our YouTube page and subscribe to it so that you can be notified when other things like this come out. We love you. God is for you. Let's keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. All right. Bless you. Have a wonderful day.